Hey everyone, Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're gonna to be flushing the brakes on this 1999 Carrera 911 behind us. A couple reasons why you may wanna do this before we get into the job is simply due to the fact that brake fluid is hydroscopic. Brake fluid, as well as many other things, does not last forever. And while it is in a closed system in the vehicle, depending on where you keep it, how you drive, and what kind of conditions the car is stored in, it's eventually going to break down and deteriorate just like anything else. Now, in this case, the reason we are doing it on this vehicle is we just did the brakes. And since we just got the car, we don't know what the history of its fluid is. So we're going to go ahead and flush it. Another reason why you may want to look into this is if you just replaced a brake caliper or a master cylinder, something of that sort that you had to open up the system, you're going to want to bleed it before putting your car back on the road. Now, before we get started on this DIY, let's take a look at the tools we're going to need. For this job, we're going to be using our Motif Brake Bleeder Kit, something you can find on the site. However, it is not necessary. If you have a friend that owes you one, you can have them do the uh, old school push down the pedal, hold, break the brake bleeder valve, release, etc. We're going to be using our Pentasen Super Dot 4 brake fluid, some needle nose pliers. This is going to be used to get out the uh, little strainer in the brake reservoir. I'm going to be using a flared wrench. This is an 11 millimeter to get the uh, brake bleeders loosened up. You can use a normal 11, however, with a flared wrench, you reduce the risk of stripping it. This little pick is simply to get the rubber dust caps off of the brake bleeder valves. And then some nice to haves, a half inch impact with a 19 millimeter socket to get our wheels off. This is a job you can do on the lift, on the ground, in your driveway. We're gonna be doing it on the lift today just to show you guys a better view of what we're doing. Now, let's head over to the car and get started. Now that we have our motive bleeder filled up and ready to go, we're gonna go ahead and get our reservoir ready as well. We're gonna start by removing the cap. And then if you guys have been watching the other DIYs, you'll remember that before we did our brake job, we went ahead and removed the strainer. We're gonna do the same thing on this. So same thing as before, we're gonna take our needle nose pliers, find a little spot to shove them in, grip it. I just use a towel for any splashback. Pull up, I'm simply doing that, and set this to the side. From there, we're gonna go ahead and connect our bleeder and then get ready to uh, bleed the brakes. Now that we have our motive bleeder hooked up, we're going to go ahead and pressurize the system to 25 PSI. And then from there, we're going to let it sit for uh, two to three minutes just to make sure that the system has no leaks. And then from there, we can proceed to actually bleeding our brakes. Now that our pressure bleeder is all set up, we see that it's holding pressure. We can go ahead and start bleeding our brakes. Now, you always want to start working from the wheel that is furthest from the reservoir and working your way in. So for this 911, we're going to start on the rear right follow over to the rear left. Then from there, we're gonna move over to the front right and then finish off with the front left since the front left is the closest and the rear right is the furthest. So without further ado, let's get behind the rear right wheel and get started. First, we're gonna start by taking off the wheel on the 911. Now, a couple things to note. This is something that you can do on the ground in your garage or in your driveway. Just whatever you do, make sure you're working safe. Use a jack and jack stance. Today, we're gonna to be working on the lift just to make it a little bit easy for us to film. Now that we're over at the car, I want to show you guys a couple things before we get started. On this 911, all four calipers have a dual bleeder system. The reason for that is that you have pistons on the outboard and inboard side of the caliper. Not every car is like this, but this specific model and most Porsches have this kind of setup. Now, we're going to go ahead and get the bleeder valve uh, covers off. I'm just going to use this little pick to help me pry them off. And another thing I wanted to mention, just a quick tip is, I don't know when the last time these were unfrozen or undone on this caliper. So earlier today, I went ahead and sprayed all the bleeders on the car with a little bit of penetrating fluid. I'd recommend you do the same, especially if you live somewhere like we do in New England where rust is prevalent. Uh, these tend to break off. So you wanna to try to avoid that at all costs. Otherwise you're gonna have a very bad day. So just recap, penetrating fluid on all the bleeder valves. Let's go ahead and get these caps off and start bleeding. As I stab myself. Okay. 
first on this car, I'm going to thread in a lug bolt so I have a point of anchoring this catch bottle. That way I can let it hang. I don't have to worry about it falling over or spilling. And then from here, I like to go ahead, because this is a dual bleeder setup, I like to go ahead and bleed the outside first. Once I see either the dirty fluid come through or the air bubbles come through, I'll go ahead and snug it back up. Then I'll work my way to the inside bleeder, do the same thing. And then just as a good measure, I'll go back and do the outside bleeder one more time. One thing to note before we continue is that you wanna make sure the pressure at your reservoir doesn't drop too low. If you need to pump it back up to 25 PSI, go ahead and do that before you get on the next wheel. I'm gonna be using an 11 millimeter wrench to break free this bleeder. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this bleeder va valve back up. Now, because we're only doing a brake flush on this car, we didn't open the system up to any air. I wasn't so much looking for air bubbles to come through as it was for clean fluid. I usually like to break up the catch can into quarters or halves, depending on what kind of car I'm working on. So for this car, I'm probably gonna dedicate this whole catch can to the two rear calipers. So I'll do a, you know, half a catch can for one side worth of bleeding, and then the other half of the catch can for the other half on the back. We'll empty this out and then go ahead and continue with the fronts. And when you take your catch can hose off, you want to try and pinch it and take it off so that it doesn't go all over the caliper. You kind of just want to like angle it up and then all the fluid will automatically run down the, the hose and into your catch can so you don't make a mess all over your bleeder and caliper. That should do us for the inside one. And you're only snugging up these bleeder valves. It doesn't take a lot of force to torque them down. There's that one. Do the same thing with our hose here. Just lift up, that way we don't make a mess. We're completely done bleeding the inboard section of this rear right. So I'm just gonna wipe the area down and put our cap back on. And then as I mentioned before, I always like to do the outside one one last time. Thank you, Corey, for the tip. As you can see, I got about half a catch can here worth of fluid. So for this car, that's gonna be more than enough bleeding for the rear right caliper. Before we go ahead any further, let's go ahead and take a look at our pressure up top on the reservoir and see how it's looking. Before we go any further and do the other three remaining corners, we wanna do two things in between each wheel. We wanna make sure that our level on the bleeder has not dropped too low. In this case, you can see we're about 20 PSI. I'm gonna pump it right back up to 25. The second thing you wanna look for is the fluid level inside the bleeder itself. You wanna make sure it doesn't go empty, otherwise you're gonna introduce air into the system. Without further ado, let's go ahead and repressurize the system and bang out the other three wheels. As mentioned before, you start with your rear right, your rear left, your front right, and then your front left. So after we do this, we're gonna hop over to the rear left, repeat the process, check the fluid level, check the pressure level, and then wrap up the two fronts. Can you tell me when we hit uh, 25? Just to reiterate, the next corner is gonna be the same process as the other side. We're gonna take our wheel off, bleed the outer valve, then the inner, and then the outer one last time. Then from there, we're gonna go ahead and check our fluid level as well as our pressure level. Then we're gonna move on to the front right, front left, and wrap up this DIY. I'm a good people. At, by, at this point, we have gone ahead and bled all four corners of the vehicle. We came back and had added some fluid in between just so we didn't run dry. All you have to do is release the pressure on the system so we can remove this whole bleeder setup, starting by breaking the cap up, starting by breaking the cap loose up here and letting the system alleviate itself. Typically, these motive bleeders are pretty good. They're gonna leave your system to the full line on the reservoir. 
However, if we have to evacuate a little bit more fluid, we will. I'm going to do is bring this guy down just for, just for this car because I have the room to do so. Let this hose do its thing. Now we can go ahead and remove the bleeder from the reservoir. I use a towel just in case anything spills out of the top here. And then I like to cup this guy with the towel so it doesn't spill everywhere and get on the paint. As you can see, the motive bleeder did not leave this to the correct fill level, so I'm gonna use this CTA extractor tool and just take out enough to leave us to the full mark. From here, we can go ahead and put our strainer back into place. I went ahead and cleaned this off camera. All you have to do is line it in and pop it in like so. Then you can take your cap and screw it back on. Well, there you have it, my good people. That basically concludes the uh, brake flush on this Carrera 911. A couple things of note. Our car was not open to the air, and by that I mean our brake system was fully closed before we went ahead and did this job. So we were not doing this so much for getting air out of the lines as we were for just flushing out the system. If your car has been sitting on jack stands or in the garage or whatever you want to call it with its brake system apart, you more than likely introduced air into the system as well as the ABS pump. So that's something you're going to want to actuate when bleeding your system. Or if your car is equipped with PSM, you're going to need Porsche's PST2 tool to actuate the valves in that pump so that you can get the air out of that system as well. So just a couple of things to keep in mind there. Before you hit the road, you want to make sure you get in and pump the pedals until they get hard. That way, if your pistons were retracted, they can go back into place. Otherwise, if you just get in it and drive, you're going to go and you're not going to be able to stop. Overall, pretty basic tools is all you need. We use the motive bleeder and catch can kit to make it easier, but a buddy with a second set of hands is all you really need. If you guys like what you saw in this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, leave those in the box below. If you like this DIY, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.